Hi, my name is Marius and I'm gonna talk about LGBT community in Ukraine. Marius is originally from Ukraine but lives here in Gothenburg, Sweden since a while back because of the war. In this video he's going to talk about the situation for queer people in Ukraine. I'm Marius, I'm from Ukraine and I'm here as a refugee. I'm identify as a queer, queer gender and queer sexuality. I also am a polyamorous. I started to understand that something going on with me when I was in the four course of college. People started to talk that I'm like strange, that I look like a lesbian, that I'm like something strange going on with me. And I'm like, hmm, okay. And after this, I had my first experience with uh, sex with a person of my gender. And I'm like, oh wow, that, that's okay. That, like, this is. This is something normal, the same as with the men. I started to read about this and in two years I found the LGBT community and started to come there and find their friends there and talk about this with another trans people. The LGBTQIA plus community in Ukraine isn't perfect. There is a lot of uh, organizations that uh, provide you a safe space, but mostly uh, they they are charging or how to say like by by the donors uh, sponsors from uh, European Union, and they are sp sponsoring like men who have sex with the men. Most of the money going to the organizations and things that against the HIV that's helping you to to deal with it so the trans community for example have less money less energy less anything if you will compare with another parts of LGBT community and Marius has some thoughts on how the LGBTQIA plus community in Ukraine could improve in uh, our LGBT community, we still need a lot of attention to our transphobic and intersex people because it's like not visible still. And uh, for example, when we have uh, meetings in our uh, LGBT club in a safe space, and th there are meetings, there are like workshops about something, and mostly these workshops about men's and about HIV sometimes about lesbians but like <laughs> not about trans people we have i think only one trans organization that's only about trans people it's very young organization like two three years maybe so they, they're having their grants their money uh, like a lot of things to make meetings workshops uh, lectures, everything about trans people, but I think it's still very close, like they're c coming only trans people, or sometimes they're friends. But we need a LGBT safe space where they can hang out all LGBT people, and gay, and lesbians, and like everyone together, and they will go to the same meetings all together. I think that's what we need. Pride in Ukraine exists but isn't super big. In the last uh, Pride was 5,000 people and it's not all the people like we have in Ukraine, there is more, but they are in the closet or they are just can't come to, to this Pride. So there is a lot of people. And a lot of people are unable to be open about their queer identity because of the structures in society. I think it's very difficult because our society is still very patriarchalic and the Orthodox Church there is very powerful. Even the people not going to a church and they are not identified there as a religious people, they still have these things like, oh, the God will be angry at you. Or there's something in the Bible that you are like freaks and bad people and this is a sin. There is still a lot of, I don't know this word in English, but uh, like people very homophobic, very transphobic. I think they have phobia for everything, like fat phobia, <laughs> vegan phobia. And if you are gay or a trans person and you are in the same time fat and vegan, no way. <laughs> so usually I'm talking about this only in my in my bubble 
my social bubble, like the people who are more progressive, but not on the streets, not in an open uh, social media. And having to hide your true self like that takes a toll on you. Yeah, that was uh, difficult because all my society at that moment, like all my social bubble and my family was very, not my sister, but everyone in my family was very homophobic, very like, like, like everyone around. And in a few years I found like people who are now in my social bubble and most of them are queer or gay or trans or someone like this or people who are very open for this and very friendly. I was never able to express myself in my family, for example, as a queer person. Each time when I met them, when I come to, like a guest or went to a birthday party, I was like very female, like I was in a cute dress, cute shoes, cute like makeup and everything. I'm a princess. Yeah, but uh, now we're talking with my family a lot about this and they are trying to understand how it's working. They are trying to like do something with this, but mostly we don't talk about this. And being queer is also difficult because of the very gendered Ukrainian language. Then it's difficult because in, in uh, Ukrainian language and in Russian language there is like uh, she and he, and he pronounce not only when you talk about someone so when you say some verb there is ending on this verb and you understand is it a man or a woman so it was very difficult to talk there because each time I talk about me I, I, I like talking with a male pronouns and male ending of the verbs. But the queer community in Ukraine is fighting for a more inclusive way of using their language. We have they in, in our language, but mostly it's about not a life things like table or, or something like this. And also it was used in fairy tales for some strange like monsters that you cannot describe who is it and you saying this they also homophobic and transphobic people they use they like a slur like like bad language yeah so we're trying to change this we're trying to use they so, uh, like uh, young people are very open to this they are using this thing but even for LGBT people who are not trans, they're also very difficult understanding this, like how it's working. So we're changing this, but it will take a lot of time. And Ukrainian laws aren't great for LGBTQA plus people. In our constitution, the marriage is still between man and woman. The gay couple can't take the kid from the orphan house to adoption because they are still like the kids should go into a marriage couple, and marriage couple is a man and a woman. But of course there are people working for more inclusive laws. There was a petition now a few months ago, if we, we will have 25,000 signs of this uh, document, the president should take a look of this petition and saying something officially about this, what he thinks. And there was a petition about gay marriage that we should make it legal because a lot of gay couple is going to um, army now and fighting with the Russians. And if the gay guy or lesbian girl will die there, his uh, partner or her partner will not be able to take a body to bearing to get the money that goes from this partner. Like if you have an apartment, you will get it after the death. So this partner partnering will not be able to get it. And also if in a better way, if this person will get to the hospital after the war, the partner will be not able to visit him or her. So we tried to, to do this petition and the president is answered that right now we can't do this because in the wartime 
you can't uh, change the constitution. But after the war, we will take a look about this and thinking about this and do something. And Marius is hopeful that they will change the constitution after the war to allow gay marriage. I hope that they will change it uh, after the war because it started even before. It started with the, an, another president that was before the Zelensky, Poroshenko. There was a petition that we need to make at least partnership. So if they can't marry a marriage, so we need a partnership that will give almost the same thing as a marriage. So, like, there's a lot of war going on right now about these laws. And also, there is some laws changing now about trans people. I don't remember how it calls this book in English, uh, like, uh, the big book about all disease. So there was a transgenderity, but in the next version of this book, in 11 version, there is no transgenderity. So it should change in 2021. So it should work right now, but it's not working. A lot of doctors, they are still comparing everything with this book, like it's a disease, psychiatrical disease. The people who have a psychiatrical disorder, for example, they can't take a kid from orphan house. There is some laws that are changing it right now, and I really hope that it will work because Without these documents, without every this like uh, meeting with the psychiatrist, with endocrinologist, psychologist, without every these meetings, you can't change your documents to your gender. Thanks God that I didn't change it before the war, because I wouldn't be able to go outside, probably. But I know some transgender people with the male sign, and they came out of Ukraine, but yeah, it would be difficult. I also asked Marius if they had anything they wanted to say about the ongoing war. Of course, it's bad thing. It's like the worst thing that could be. There's two things that I want to say about this. Like the first one is if the Russia will take the territory of Ukraine, how it was with the Crimea and Donbass, if they want to take more and more territory, the people in this territory will go under the Russian laws. And the Russian laws are very homophobic. There is uh, a lot of laws that saying that the LGBT is making propaganda. So it will mean that even this sucks. It will like a propaganda for people all around and I will make it gay kids. <laughs> So this, this person who are wearing these socks they should go to the jail or pay a big, big fine. There will be no gay pride, no LGBT communities, no safe space, no LGBT socks, nothing. Because nobody wants to pay a few thousands of dollars and nobody wants to go to the jail. If we will not stop the Russia right now, they will take more and more territory and in the end it will take all Ukraine and it will go to the Europe because they really think that they are saving kids from the LGBT community because Ukraine wants to go to the Europe. They are saving people from buying gay to be adopting by a trans people, by a gay couple. And the second thing I want to say that really making me mad that the European Union and not only Europe but mostly European Union is helping Ukraine just because like Ukraine is neighbor of European Union. If we would be a Syrian people nobody would care. Nobody cared when the Russia came to Syria or to Georgia. Nothing happened. Nobody cared, like, helped. Like, of course there was a help, but not the huge help as going now to Ukrainian people. To wrap up, these are Maria's hopes and dreams for the LGBTQIA plus community in Ukraine. My hope for LGBT community is, and not only for our community, for all society in Ukraine, that after the war we will go to European Union and we will take a lot of uh, laws that will protect LGBT people and will be not against LGBT people. 
and there will be possibility to a gay marriage, to uh, tr transition, to adopting kids, to everything. Yeah, I, I hope well, this. If you enjoyed watching that video, please like, comment, subscribe and share the video. I really appreciate you showing your love in that way. If you also want to support the channel financially, that's possible via Patreon, but really no pressure. See you next time.